It's pretty impressive. Yeah. Our guest in this segment, speaking of pretty impressive, is Amy Orndahl from Aww. Berkeley Senior Services. Amy. Good morning. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Taking a little break from politics here. Unless um, you're campaigning for something. Are you oh, running no. for office? No, 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 no. Just campaigning for my seniors. That's it. That's well, cool. if she did campaign, she'd get a lot of votes. Oh. Amy is very popular. Oh, well, I appreciate that. Thank you. I think Bill's got Thank an idea you. here. Yeah. Uh-oh. Nah. <laughs> He's got the financing, Amy. He's got the money to back your campaign. We'll talk. Tesla <laughs> on the way back up. Uh, speaking of campaigning for seniors... Amy, when we last spoke with you, you had some concerns in regards to the state legislature and some funding that needed to be around the state, especially uh, earmarked towards seniors. We did, and um, that was not put into the general budget um, as we had hoped. So during special session, that's uh, one of the things we're hoping that will be discussed, primarily the increased um, reimbursement rates for Medicaid waiver and personal care mm -hmm. uh, services that we provide in the homes. Have you gotten any feedback since that show from any of the local de uh, delegation um i i know quite a few are are working on it for us um there are a few delegates that have um they have personal ties as, as they own uh facilities that would also benefit from these increases so I, I think a lot of people are aware within the legislature of how important this is i mean in, increases haven't happened in almost 10 years and how much has our economy changed in almost 10 years with the with the inflation of things and our reimbursement rates are the same and we're the lowest um of all of our surrounding states mm -hmm. so now, excuse me i mean i'm confused mm -hmm. uh the tie between medicare and the state medicare is a federal funding program and you're saying the reimbursement are reduced by the feds and the state's going to augment that or what well, are you saying exactly? this is for medicaid medicaid so, oh okay yes. okay yes. not medicare yes okay. medicaid okay we had west virginia birth to three representatives in here last week and they had said they hadn't gotten an adjustment in the reimbursement rate in 24 years? Yeah, and, and Medicaid, um, with our aged and disabled waiver and personal care programs, we did receive an increase um, during COVID and even post-COVID. The problem was it was a temporary increase and there were a lot of strings attached to how it could be used. And while we appreciate any increase that we can receive at all, we know it was temporary. So it wasn't, we couldn't increase the wages of our personnel because it was temporary. So we opted to um, provide bonuses for our staff to let them know how much they're appreciated and they're valued. And, um, you know, so that we could, those were things that we could sustain. They were a one time and we did multiple, multiple of those. There were some senior centers that did opt to increase wages for their, their staff because we have until the end of 2025 in hopes that something would would happen between now and then uh, the problem with that is is if this increase does not go through then those wages have to be decreased back prior to what the temporary increases opted them to give so you know how do you keep staff when you have to take their pay away uh, you know it, it's it's a constant balancing act and we really really need these these rates increased what is your funding stream you get money from who? I'm not talking about the maintenance of the building. I know that comes right. a lot from the county. Mm -hmm. But as far as operational salaries and staff, where do you get your money? Uh, it comes from a variety of places. We receive um, Medicaid reimbursement rates, of course. We also receive the majority of our funding comes from the West Virginia Bureau of Senior Services, which is allocated through the legislature. And then it trickles down through us, and it's administered by the Area Agency on Aging or our AAA. Um, we also get a lot of, uh, we're very blessed that we get a lot of lo uh, local grants, like from the United Way, um, the community, Eastern West Virginia Community Foundation. So we're very blessed in that we have a community that truly does support our seniors. Talk about what your budget, what's your total budget, Amy, and then what portion of that comes from each of the funding streams that you just mentioned? Sure. Our overall budget's about $2.1 um, of that, approximately 80 to 85 percent is is state funded from the Bureau of Senior Services. Um, very, very small percentages are from those those other grants, but they do help because a lot of times those grants, especially like our United Way grant, the Community Foundation grants, 
they're for general overall operational purposes. And we, we don't give those in the form of increases to our staff because those are those can vary from year to year, but they do allow us to fill gaps where the funding from the state falls short. So we can provide more transportation trips or more respite services for caregivers. What's, what is the size of your staff? Uh, we're around, we vary, it's very fluid, um, between 80 and 90 um, staff members currently. On do you payroll. still have a satellite office in um, uh, the northern part of the county? We do not. Uh, they disbanded during COVID and opted not to, mm. to kind of get back together. We're looking to maybe do something like that again in the northern part. Um, we'd also like to expand into the southern um, mm. and to South Berkeley. The problem with that is we don't have the staff, so it would have to be manned entirely by volunteers. Uh, we would deliver lunch there. We would provide them a meal, but trying to get that core group of volunteers to, to start that mm -hmm. has proven to be a little difficult. You said 80 to 90 on your staff. What do the majority of those folks do, Amy? The majority of that staff is our in-home care staff that provide services in the homes. A large uh, part of that staff is our respite, um, which provides relief for caregivers caring for a loved one with Alzheimer's or dementia. Um, so the majority of our staff is out in the field. We typically have between 12 and 14 of us on site at the senior center, and then the rest are out in the field providing services. How many volunteers do you have? Oh, wow. And, and what did they do? And what are their names? And yeah. What are their names? <laughs> exactly. What's their social security <laughs> number? No, 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 not that. Not that. <laughs> we are very, very blessed. We have approximately 75 to 80 volunteers. They lead all of our classes on site at the center. Um, we also have volunteers in our respite program uh, and our congregate program that we provide the respite for at the senior center. None of our volunteers go in the home. Um, all of anyone that goes in the home is a paid staff member. You mentioned congregate mm -hmm. along with uh, respite. What are, what are they? Desc des describe both programs. Uh, they both essentially provide the same type of relief for the caregiver. They are, um, they're providing a structured schedule for uh, a, someone that's been diagnosed with an Alzheimer's or dementia diagnosis. The main difference is as that disease progresses, it's hard for them to be in a group setting. So once they reach that point, then we transition them to being in their own home and we provide the same type of services. So it's just a um, more of a social program versus sure. a one-on-one -on -one in their home, sure. but they're doing the same things. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about how you partner with other agencies. You mentioned the United Way, but um, obviously a big piece is the um, the meal program Absolutely. at your facility, but we also have Meals on Wheels and some other f places that um, that take care of that piece of of need that seniors might have. So talk about that. I'm so glad that you brought that up, Maria. Um, we we are able to provide a little bit of a big picture. So when all of us partner together, we can provide a bigger part to the bigger picture. Uh, for instance, Meals on Wheels. Diane, she is phenomenal. She cannot reach everybody in Berkeley County. We cannot reach everybody in Berkeley County. So we're constantly going back and forth. Hey, you know, can, can we add this one to your route? Okay, I've got this one. Um, the difference with our programs is that there's a charge for the meal with Meals on Wheels. There is no charge for our meals. It's on a donation only basis. So that gets a little, a little dicey to, to kind of explain to recipients. Uh, our in-home care services, we provide uh, the environmental care. So we do not do any of the skilled care in the homes. So we partner with hospice. We partner with Panhandle Home Health. We partner with those agencies that have that staff that can provide the skilled care while we take care of the bathing, dressing, grooming. And again, the need is so great. You know, we have a waiting list for several of our programs. So if we find someone that is in dire need that has absolutely no one, our nurses, our staff is on the phone calling these other agencies. You know, if, if we do Mondays, can you do Wednesday and Fridays? You know, we're, we're constantly, um, you know, trying to make sure that the needs of our seniors are met. That's that's the bottom line. And however that needs to happen, that's what we're trying to do. You're, you're reinforcing something I think we're all aware of. This is such a caring, compassionate community. Do you have any sense at all what percent of the folks that that have needs are not been met? Oh wow! Is it a large number or a small number? Has been lost in the noise, or do you have any idea? I, 
If I had to guess, I would say it's a large number only because um, while we're all trying to work to provide services, they're at a minimal amount. No one is receiving everything that they need. And while we're all trying to do a little bit for everybody, there's always going to be a need. So what do you um, what do you do for some of the um, senior living places, the Ambrose Towers, those? I mean, do you have outreach in we do. those as well? We do. Um, a variety of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, we take the those recipients. We take anyone over the age of 60 we provide transportation for. But specifically those, we take shopping. Um, we take them to the grocery store to get their hair done, to run their errands. We also deliver meals to those high rises. Um, we've brought in crafts and different activities that we've done at the center that they're not able to get to. We bring those to them so that they, we can do them right there on site for them. And a lot of those, those, um, residents that live in those high rises, we provide in home care services for, because a lot of them, they have no one else. They're, they're there all alone. And our staff going in, that's the only person they're going to see that day. You mentioned the, uh, the scary part of the Medicaid reimbursement that you, uh, and if you get it, it's going to be on the back end of the budget. So that means it's not going to be permanent. It's going to be just a one-time deal. Uh, what other needs are you facing at the senior center? Um, Probably a lot, but what's your major uh, needs? Yeah. The major need is um, staffing. Um, we, we uh, full disclosure, we do not offer a competitive wage. Um, not when someone can go across the line and work in Maryland or in Virginia. Um, so staffing is huge for us. And, um, you know, I was just sharing with Rob before we left, our nutrition manager is about to retire. And this is a Shephany. person. Say it ain't so, Shephany. Shephany. <laughs> she, no, it's Shanice. 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 Shephany was before. Shephany was before gotcha. Shanice. But this is a person, this is just to give you an example of how passionate our, our staff are. This is a person who lives in um, Wardensville, West Virginia, and drives an hour and a half one way every single day to go to work. Oh, my. Um, she's had both of her knees replaced and at this point she's just kind of like i i have to tap out you know being on this Mm -hmm. concrete it's it's in the drive but uh, you know where else would you find someone that's willing to drive an hour and a half one way to come do what they do it's because they love our seniors so you you have a help wanted ad you're about to put out soon oh it's been out Mm -hmm. (laughs) um we need a nutrition manager and we also need a nutrition assistant uh one of our um, assistance in the kitchen has decided to um, relocate to go to school in Tennessee. Mm-hmm. So we are we are in need of two full time, and they are full time positions in the kitchen. All right. Do you, are you allowed to say the pay range? Um, it's it's out, honestly based on experience. So if you're so. really experienced, hundred fifty thousand is probably a good starting. Oh, we point. won't go there, <laughs> but <laughs> I can guarantee it won't be six figures. Because I, I can make a mean PB and J. I can. Uh, what's for lunch today? Uh, t- I knew you were going to ask that. What's, what is Shanice cooking up? Uh, Shanice is cooking up pork chops and um, sweet potatoes mm. with seasoned cabbage and cornbread. And what time does lunch start? Lunch is from eleven thirty to twelve thirty Monday through Friday. And how much does it cost? It is now seven twenty five. There was an increase. It wasn't. Well, you got to pay the bill. Anyone, anyone under the age of sixty. If you're over the age of sixty, which I now am, it's on a donation. So whatever yeah. you feel Ooh, inclined to Rob, give, you, you have more deep pockets. We need it. <laughs> and you have very long are you arms. Gonna, are you going to pay for our lunch for Bill and I? Oh yeah, it's absolutely. Get, I would. Yeah. I would one hundred percent pay for your yeah. lunch. Okay. Now with the same meal be served in the building as it will be going outside to the uh yes. uh, been delivered yes yeah. yes we um and we pack out so we deliver meals three times a week for seven days so our home delivered recipients receives multiple meals on the days that we take out but they they receive meals through the weekends and then usually in the fall um usually late october early november we'll send out a few extra meals that they can keep in their freezer so if we would happen to have a snow day that we couldn't get to them for for any reason they have a meal that's that's sustainable for up to six months so the multiple meals that you send out are they all the same no they're very no they're all we cook different meals every single day Mm -hmm. and all of our meals are prepared from scratch and from scratch and we are monitored um, to follow state and federal regulations on nutrition. And 
Uh, good, Bill. I was going to say, let's give a shout out to the county. Uh, Absolutely. They, they maintain the building, and uh, uh, Jack Lang does all your uh, um, maintenance work. He for does, it, so. and in fact, they were. We've had an electrical issue in the kitchen. That's been it. It's one of those things that it's hit or miss, and trying to figure yeah. out and pinpoint what it is. And for about a month, they've been trying to figure it out. And uh, the county, along with an electrician, was in our building yesterday for several several hours probably about four hours yeah. um to get it resolved and fixed so our county is incredibly support uh, very very supportive when is uh, shanice's last day uh not till july oh we so have we her have till july time. we have her f- for a little while her, her name is actually denise denise and yeah. i call her chef denise so yes. we shorten it to shanice. shanice so if you walk in and say shanice here <laughs> <laughs> she'll know who it is she'll know who it is she'll know who but it only is. because yes yeah uh yeah. so um you mentioned in a previous interview in regards to the medicaid reimbursement that the local senior center was okay for now but you were concerned about other places around the state literally shutting down that was during the nutrition uh the issue that we were having with nutrition mm-hmm. um nutrition seems to be a a, a a big, big issue throughout the state. Uh, for some reason, people think our seniors don't need to be fed properly. Yeah. I, I don't know why that is, but um, that's kind of the perception that we have. And we we were able to all pull together and not a single senior center had to shut down and everyone was able to be fed because of fundraising and because you know we were able to, the state was able to move some things around at the bureau level. So um, we do have a new commissioner who that was kind of her first introduction to welcome to West Virginia kind of thing. Um, was and it, was she that, handled it very, very well. Was that part of the DHHR split? Do you folks fall under them or are you somewhere else? Uh, we do kind of indirectly just because of the Medicaid programs. Mm-hmm. So, um, and, and that's a lot of the problem with the Medicaid reimbursement rates because of the split and divide with DHHR right now or DHHS right now. I, I think it's a matter of getting all of those individual components kind of cleaned up and situated before they look at Medicaid reimbursement rates. And, you know, it's kind of what comes first, the chicken or the egg, because, you know, without those Medicaid reimbursement rates, how are we going to sustain what we're doing? Amy, you mentioned earlier that the uh, uh, northern part of the county satellite office closed, uh, and you've been looking for years by the southern part, and of course, Back Creek Valley is, mm-hmm. needs to be represented as well. How aggressive are you looking to establish satellite offices um, or facilities, I should say? We, we looked aggressively right after the pandemic to really try to open up. Um, right now, I, kind of our... our I guess our, our focus has shifted a little bit and, you know, just trying to sustain where we are with, with what we have. Uh, but that is something that we are looking to, mm-hmm. to press forward on and, and to do hopefully in the near future. Final word is yours, Miss Amy. Um, do want to remind everyone of our Mother's Day tea that will be this coming Saturday. Uh, tickets are on sale and we can now purchase, you can now purchase tickets online. We also have our senior prom on Friday, which I'm so excited about. Um, we'll have DJ Monty there. And then on Thursday, May 16th, from 1.30 to 3.30, we will have um, a training for a, a training provided by Teresa Morris, who is the program director with the West Virginia chapter of the Alzheimer's Association um, for our caregivers. So she's is, very good. It, we're, we're so yeah. excited to have her. Um, you know, Alzheimer's is, is such a, a, a crazy disease to try to navigate so just educating our our caregivers and and how to how to take care of it amy great to see you again good to see you thanks for having me you're always a wonderful representative of berkeley senior services thank you i appreciate that and in honor of your lunch today pork chops and apple (laughs) sauce and that's swell yeah there you go bobby where do you who who of our age group does not just recognize that yeah pork chops and apple sauce right Hey, it's uh, 10 o'clock.